here at the HVAC Training Symposium, and I have my really good friend, John Ellis here. And John Ellis is a master of indoor air quality and a wealth of knowledge. I always enjoy talking to him because even if it's not just indoor air quality, it's so much information, so much passion to share. John, man, thanks for spending some time talking with us. Hey, man, it's just a pleasure to be here. What a great event. I mean, this is organic grassroots. Brian Orr, what a vision to, to, to have to set up this for built for us and for technicians and everybody that's here just really wants to be here. It's just 100%. amazing. I agree. I yeah. love it. So tell my audience, what it is that you do from your words? Well, you know, that's a loaded question and I'm glad you asked because uh, I actually wear several different hats. So first and foremost, my company is called Dynamic Air Consulting. And what that is, is I get to go out in the field and work with clients that are severely compromised, both respiratory and immunocompromised. And I help, um, create a scope of work to, that's conducive of healthy living and uh, you know for e each client you know uh, customized a and I use that opportunity to bring technicians with me and I bring all my tools I've got a, a bunch of toys you know we love toys a and it, it allows them to uh, use them tactile you know and, and then understand what the data is that's gathered with all those tools and so that's a dynamic air consulting. Uh, I have the distinct pleasure of teaching indoor air quality for Dyke and Amanda Goodman. Now they came to me and said, John, we really want to put this curriculum out to the community, the HVAC community, uh, through the, the channels of uh, Dyke and Amanda Goodman. That would be the, the Amanda Brand Business Academy and the, uh, the uh, Goodman Business Toolbox. So that's the mechanism. And I said, hey, I would love to do that. But you know what? I don't want to stand in front of an audience and push products. I said, because that's what everybody else does. I, it's got to be the nuts and bolts and science behind indoor air quality. From a building science, a building forensics, and an HVAC point of view. So that gave me freedom to really just build this for our industry. Uh, it's 16 hours. It's accredited for uh, Nate CEUs. It's been very well received. And then... Uh, Switching hats, I, I have the pleasure of working with the new flat rate. Now what that is, it is a menu pricing built for you. We are not a pricing company. We are a software and process development company. And we cater to HVAC, plumbing, electrical. We actually added a chimney module soon to add. So chimney cleaning and repair soon to start adding a, a, a remediation module. But what I got to do at the new flat rate is just amazing. The, 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 co the founder, Rodney Coop, and I, who also has been doing indoor air quality at a very high level, uh, locked ourselves in a room, and we created the very first of its kind in our industry, building science and IAQ pricing menu. And awesome. it is fantastic. We put it through beta testing, and now it went live, and guys are using it. We're having great success. And, just a kind of a kind of a brainchild of Rodney's and I. This is wonderful to see it grow and 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 develop and and be useful for a lot of contractors. That is really awesome. Indoor indoor air quality and the building science is so vast, and you can really you can get lost in it because there's so much to it. So it's great to see not only a training system and also levels that you can also price it with your customers. That's that's taking all these different aspects of your abilities and putting them in one user friendly box. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, and um, you know. The, the biggest thing is, uh, in, in my experience, I've been doing indoor air quality at a very high level for a very long time. And my clients would come to me with cystic fibrosis, immune deficiencies, oncology, COPD, and the likes. And so we want to we wanna help those, those clients. But we, we would do discovery, and I just gave it away because I didn't know any better. And, and uh, fortunately, I had a, a, a very high closing rate. But it's not unusual for the building science community and the indoor to just give that part away. And, you, and so, and we hope to make up for it on the back end. And so if you've got a high closing rate, but you never really do. And so our, our app starts with discovery and it allows the, the, the contractor to get in front of the customer and create a pathway and they get paid for every step of the way. So it's really pretty neat. It really makes sense. Cause if you go to the doctor, they don't just say, Hey, we're just going to do all these tests and do all the work and then we'll sell you the, the solution. They're, 
they're charging you for every test they do and everything that they get the whole entire process. So it, it oh, really you, makes sense. You better believe they're charging you for every <laughs> step of the way. And really, as they should, it's a profession. They went to school. There was a lot of liability involved in that. And same thing here. We have to diagnose. We have to work with the house and see the whole house as a picture. And, and then, you know, that's a great point. Yes, doctors make, uh, you know, they, they make an extraordinary amount of money. But yes, they did go to university and, tr you know, everything it took to get them from from where they were to being a doctor. And you know what, it's the same way with us. I mean, we come to the table with just a wealth of knowledge, and so it, it is okay to get paid for your knowledge, experience, and expertise. It, that is the commodity. Yeah. yeah. So did you ever think you would be doing all of these things, or even any one of these things, when you first started with HVAC? Oh my goodness. Ty, that's a loaded question. I, now you're making me think. <laughs> so uh, the short answer is no. And, and so, and, and I, I know you don't like to put a lot of, uh, you, you know, a, a lot of, you know, value to however many years people have been in it. I've been doing this for 40 years. Even 15 years ago, if you would have asked me, hey, John, do you think you'd be where you're at now? I would have said no. But you know what? Every day is a learning experience. We're a constant student of the discipline. And we constantly learn. I come to this symposium and I get little nuggets from everybody and I'm constantly learning, you know, and I, I know you, you read a lot of diagrams, you go, you watch podcasts and different things and we're constantly learning. So um, just what a, what a blessing it's been and uh, just to be where I'm at now, uh, you know, I actually retired once. And then uh, I came out of retirement just to, because I'm kind of in legacy mode, if you think about it, and just giving back to the community. And uh, I, just, awesome. I just love it. You know, I, I love that you've been doing it for 40 years. And the whole time I've known you, I don't think I've ever heard you brag about the 40 years. I've used people that say, I've seen people that say, I've been doing it this long, so this is why it's okay to do that. And the whole time I've known you, you always back up everything you have to say with science. So it's not that uh, just because you've been doing it for 40 years, you back up everything you say. John has a ton of articles about indoor air quality. I've been reading his articles before I ever got to meet him several years ago. And when I got to sit down and talk with him in person, that we just really hit it off. And I, I'm always learning from him. And it's just really great to have colleagues and people you admire and then turn into colleagues and then turn into a friendship. We keep up with each other and more travel is what we're doing. And, and I think that's really important for HVAC. But a really important question is you, you, you get this beautiful, awesome career. And a lot of people starting out, they don't know where they're going to go. And I didn't know I was going to end up here. You didn't know you were going to end up there. Mm -hmm. But how did you get started with HVAC? I started at the very, very bottom. As entry level as entry level can be, I was stocking shelves and doing UPS at a supply house. That's where I started. And then uh, the opportunity came up. A, a, a contractor uh, said, hey, you know what? We need somebody. I was like, hey, that was, uh, that was my foot in. A and then I was, uh, I was crawling underneath houses and changing B60 gas valves and pilot generators on floor furnaces. You know, right? And so that's, you know, crawling and dead animals. And it's like, oh, this ain't so glamorous. But, but I stayed with it. And then I graduated to window units. It's like, ooh. And then evaporative cooling. And I know a lot of you guys probably say, what's evaporative cooling? Because in the dry climates, they actually use evaporative yeah, cooling. Uh, and, and so, and then it's just, it's just a constant, like, learn, 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 and up and up and up. And then you've been in several trade unions and just constantly learning, learning, learning. I, I so admire that. So many of us that they're in HVAC, it's not that we made this full decision of, hey, this is the career we're going to do. So most got started by accident. Like uh, my dad did sheet metal work, and I know I didn't want to do sheet metal work, and I just ended up with a job in HVAC, and I thought, well, I needed to pay some bills and uh, get gas money. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, uh, you know, I found a trade that I, I truly love, and as you. And we always talk about HVAC just all the time. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. I love this industry. So if somebody's going to start, somebody's getting started out with this career, what advice would you have for somebody fresh getting into the HVAC or considering it? So there's several paths. I mean, uh, obviously a, a trade school uh, is one path. Um, having, if, if you're a, a young person, having a summer job as an intern um, for an air conditioning company may very well be a path. Uh, and so... Um, you know, if you wanted to go the union route, you could get into a union. I mean, there's several ways to get in. 
But I, I think just um, gaining that experience. So if you can do an internship or just be a helper or, or like myself, I had been in the construction industry doing a lot of different things. And then, uh, hey, I, we need help at a supply house. It's like, hmm, that I never knew what air conditioning was. I mean, I, I knew. It's like, hey, I walked into the building. It's cool. That's because of the air conditioning. Uh, but that, that was about as entry level as you get. So there's several pathways. Yeah. But education is key. Education. Regardless how you get that education, education is expensive. Whether you get it from making mistakes or you get it from a formal education or you get it from having to spend time with a lower wage earning from somebody, education is going to cost. But the education is the key. A lot of people do HVAC and they just do this one job they entered in and they're happy with that. That's okay. But to really enjoy that learning about it, learning how things work is so important. We have a lot of people that already learn air conditioning, already love air conditioning, and you talk a lot about building science, indoor air quality. If somebody wanted to take that next step getting into that, the true fix, not just these gimmicks that you know say they're gonna put a chemical in the air and clean it, they wanted to really understand building science and indoor air, how would they get started? What's the first step you would recommend for somebody to get started? Uh, again, education. Um, finding like-minded people and do as they do. Uh, and watch them. So there's a, uh, uh, it's called the learning ladder. And I'll see if I can say this right, but you, you only know what you know, mm -hmm. and you don't know what you don't know. It's kind of like ignorance is bliss, right? Uh, but then there's a, a, a re revelation, if you will. Now you know you don't know. That requires an action step. And, and you need to go out and gain knowledge and expertise and, and uh, uh, experience. And so then once, once you, and, and so that's cognitive learning, you know? And so once you get past the, uh, I, I only know what I know and I don't know what I don't know, and now I know that I don't know, but now you learned it, it becomes subconscious. And, and I like to use this in my classroom. So I, 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 I live in New Mexico and I'm doing a training in, let's say, Florida. Um, I didn't know how to drive a car. I didn't, wasn't born knowing how to drive. But I'd watch mom and dad drive, and I'd watch other people drive, and i watch people drive on, on television. And then it's like, okay, I got to take driver's training, and so I learned how to drive. And so, but I didn't know, I had to learn. I get in my truck in New Mexico, and I point it at Florida, I don't have a clue how I got here. <laughs> because I'm d adjusting the radio, I'm eating a sandwich, I'm, I'm uh, you know, turning on the air conditioning, fixing my seat, I often listen to audio books, and, um, I, I don't text and drive. Uh, I may have read one or two. Let's just go put that out there. But, but it's like, and next thing you know, several days later, I'm in Florida. That, that's subconscious. I didn't know how to drive at one time. And so you know, our industry is that way. And any, any discipline, whether it's plumbing, electrical, skilled trades, I mean, you, you, you start off and you need to learn and, and it becomes subconscious. And then, then it's like, hey, what's this building science thing? And, and so there, there's that, hey, now you, now you acknowledge, I don't know. And so then you learn. And um, there's several avenues. Uh, BPI is one of them. You know, uh, why, uh, learning like some guys like from Nate and different people. I was so blessed to get to, to be brought under the wing of some, some revolutionary, you know, game-changing people in, in my career. They said, hey, John, come along. We're going to go, we're going to go fix some houses. Um, so finding a, a mentor is probably a really good idea. But there's, man, with the, with the internet and YouTube and podcasts and, you know, like Brian Orr, he's got a wealth of content. My goodness, I, I am in total awe because he never runs out of content. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, and I get, I get his email. It's like, oh, hey, did you know this? I'm like, dude, you never run out. And that is awesome. And so those, those are all avenues that you can uh, get into. We're going to put a link to some of John's articles, some of my favorite articles. He's got a lot. So we're going to put some links in the video below so you can see that. And John, you got a lot of great quotes. I, I love quoting this many times, but give us one final little quote. Prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. Prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. I love yeah, that. I, so I, I kind of I keyed that from the medical community. And, and so the reason I say that in the indoor quality realm of thing, you know, uh, our industry, our, uh, we've got some of the smartest guys I know. We are problem solvers. One thing we do best is fix stuff and figure out problems. And the harder the problem, the bigger, the harder we dig in and, and, and figure that out. But in the indoor air quality realm of things, we've lost sight of that and we're looking for an easy answer. And, and it's not entirely our, our fault. I mean, we're subjected to marketing and 
you know, different things, and, and we, we'd like to believe we're being told the truth to, but I think it's time to just dig back in and get back to the roots of what we do, and that's solve problems. And we're, we're in the driver's seat. I think, I think HVAC technicians are in the best position to solve indoor air quality issues. I think HVAC technicians are in the best position to make that transition into building science. Yeah, I mean, that's, we, that's what our industry does best. We fix and solve problems. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, John, so much. It's oh. always a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. I really appreciate your passion. I appreciate you sharing some of the, just a little bit or a small piece of our conversations, sharing it with everybody out there so you can see and have a bigger view of what HVAC is and hopefully a bigger idea of what your career potential is. And a big thing is just seeing all the diverse backgrounds that people have. Everybody we've talked to got into HVAC in a different method. They learned a different method and ended up in a different spot. So your career, your future is unlimited. So it's just as big or small as you want to be. And if you don't like what you're doing, you can learn something else and take an entirely different path. Never stop learning.